Hey guys, it's MP again and today I would like to talk about government reforms with you. As you know, with 1034 Paradox added a lot of new government reforms and I've just highlighted it the, in the patch notes. So in general we have 19 new for the monarchies, 26 for the republics and 17 new for the theocracies and 12, 12 unique government reforms in total. We will start especially talking about theocracies today because I played them a lot lately and I know a lot of people of you like the Teutons, like the Livonian Orders, Riga and even other theocracies like Cologne are really really good and interesting countries now. But with all the kind of new government reforms it's easy to be overwhelmed with all the kind of options. So I will help you to pick the right options and I even will deep dive into certain kind of option when it is maybe needed to change or when it is kind of the best uh, option for the start. Let's start. Subscribe to my channel. It is really, really worth for me and it really motivate me to keep on producing these kind of videos. Thanks a lot. Let's deep dive into the theocracies. So I use as a safe game from, from my side where I played as Livonian Order as you, as you can see and Livonian Order is one of the new countries so if you're interested in it I have provided already a guide for that so pay attention to the link and that's the bottom and here inside and if you like it just go ahead and watch it. Tier 1 reforms. Normally all countries in Europe start with clerical state or with monastic order. There is only one country that starts with something different, that is a pope. The papal state have a different government reform. As you could see, I have here crusader order and crusading empire. This is, was something very special because Livonian order, as when you progress through the mission tree, you get more kind of government reform that makes you stronger. So the crusading empire is an upgrade to the crusader order. There's additionally the two terms. They receive a special kind of government reform too, the Holy Order. And this is something very, very special and gives you more punch military right. The Swiss down here have something in, in mind too. They have something like Swiss autonomic estates, but for that they need to change from a republic to a theocracy. So you won't see that too often. Furthermore, there are some more. For example, Riga, um, I'm sadly I'm already conquered it. They have a, a special kind of government reform too, the blessed plutocracy for the Catholic or the Zafific plutocracy. This is for the Protestant. As the name mentioned, internal and external mission, it's basically about how to do trade, how to go or forward with natives, how to build ships, how to make missionaries and stuff like that. So, I will point out what I think are the most and the best things here. The best thing I think is external mission. It gives you 10% manpower recovery speed. Especially in the beginning of the game, when manpower is a problem, you need recovery speed. Every little thing helps. But there are some nations who are strong military wise and maybe do not need the recovery speed. For them, a second option is very valuable. It's a commercial mission. It gives you one additional merchant and global trade power. Think about that. If you are, for example, in the HRE, you normally put a merchant over here in Rhineland and maybe another one in Vienna, if you are, for example, Cologne. But you additionally maybe need a merchant over there in Saxony. You can use merchants for different kind of things like maximize profit, hostile trading or improve improve relations. So sometimes a merchant is very beneficial, especially if you want to squeeze out some more coins. In my case, I have a huge empire, I have trade ideas and I have put merchants almost everywhere because I need them for my money. One more thing I like to point out is mission of protection. Mission of protection is very useful if you want to convert a lot of land and if you are hungry for prestige. So I think 
sometimes mission of protection is valuable too. In my Livonia game, for example, I start with this external mission and as I was conquering more and more land for the, from the Moscovians, I was not able to keep up with, uh, with the missionaries because I had only two, I had no religious ideas, so this kind of mission of protection was very, very valuable for me. The other two, this balanced mission, you don't need devotion, it's, it's totally, it sucks, don't take it. The other one, internal mission, tolerance of true faith, you have a, such as a high uh, conversion speed, I think as, as a theophrasy you don't need it. And mission to civilize, the settler chance plus 10% and native uprising chance minus 50%. If you are in colonization with theocracy, it could be an option, but I would not pick it. Mission on the high seas could be interesting if you really need more ships, but in the beginning of the game, there are not many theocracies who, who would benefit from it. Tier 3 government reform. It's all about education. I played a lot around with it. For me, there are only two options. One, and this would be always my first choice, is education of the curved. This is my number one pick. Cheaper advisors let me hire more, a bigger army, more guns and so on. So I would always pick that. A second option could be education of the theocrat. So this one basically let your ruler live longer. If you, are, if you have a crappy ruler, you, have, you are stuck with it. And additionally, one of your policies is free. So normally you can run three policies, so, but one is always for free, the first one, and the second one would be free now too if you pick that government reform. On top, the next ruler, you can pick what kind of monarch point should be enhanced. So you can pick between admin, diplo and military. Personally, I don't like it so much because it's so random and normally you are stuck sometimes with bad rulers and it, it, it just sucks. The other ones, you don't need additional missionary strength and missionary maintenance, you just don't need that. The only thing what would be worse is, is the absolutism in a, on a certain kind of point of game. Education of the people, institution spread 33% sounds good. But in the end, I think it's not worth it. Even as a Livonian order, big as that one, I could spread the global trade or the manufacturing pretty far inside of the country. I think it's not worth it. There's one more tier three government reform that you can't see because I'm a crusading empire. Again, special thanks to the Pope. The Pope has a very special one. It's called Kingdom of God. They introduced it newly to the to the game because the kingdom of God was not giving any kind of beneficial things to the to the game. It was just a rename and made it to a kingdom slash empire. But with kingdom of God you get insane buffs and I think it's an awesome government reform for the Pope. Let's talk about the religious doctrine tier 4. Tier 4 has I think a lot of good options. Personally I totally like the lens of the church because it gives our courier cost in the beginning, it makes them so much cheaper. Right now, um, I have to pay 45 for one of my, for one of my courier powers. But I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a crusading empire and have a lot of buffs already. But with that one, I can even get it down to maybe 40 or 42. And this would be is really insane. And additionally, on top of that, uh, you get more paper influence for each kind of color you have. In a country as big as mine, I have eight cardinals, so the maximum. So this would be, this is really, really great. If you are Protestant or Reformed, you get just more tax bonus and more church power, though basically it your church power recovers faster. I think that's not so good as the Catholic version. The Pope, again, has a special version. I can't show it here, but you can see it here on the screenshot. So they get cheaper cardinal costs to appoint them. But the Pope, again, has a special twist in it. If he is defender of the faith, he gets additionally improved relations and depth. So, so somehow it makes it good again. For other 
tier 4 stuff. I usually do not pick Corte Cleric privileges, the minus 10% administrative technology cost. I think it's just not worth it. It takes too much time and normally I'm not so much behind in admin technology. The clergy influence minus 10% is nice if I just want to remove some stuff from the estates, but nevertheless I do not pick it very often. Expand Temperite, on the other hand, I do pick and I personally super like it because temples and cathedral give me 33% more local tax modifier. On top I get local unrest. Normally I have churches now almost everywhere. At the Cathay almost all my provinces are covered with churches. Even these lines where I forgot to build some but this is pretty pretty good. So if you look at my taxation right now it's a huge part of my income. It's 105 ducats from my 342 ducats. So it's basically a third of it. I totally like this kind of thing. And now you need to think a little bit further. For example, the Livonian Order has a crazy, crazy mission. If you are, have, if you have cathedrals, additionally, each kind of cathedral is providing manpower. So it's basically a double buff. Manpower plus taxes. What can go wrong with that? The last one, maintain balance of power. Yeah, it's okay if you if you just need some equilibrium. Personally, I do not pick it. There are, for each kind of religion, other versions of strengthening the will and so on. It, it reduces uh, clergy influence or improves stimmy equilibrium and stuff like that. I think there's only one more very interesting, that is for the Hordes, where the Hordes guy get one plus one mill tech, uh, plus one mill skill. But all of my head, I cannot think about any kind of military theocracy that is Tengri. Please leave a comment behind if you know any kind of Tengri nation who is a theocracy. That would even teach me something. Thank you. Tier 5 in general has a lot of good options, but personally my top pick is always monastic breweries. You can always pick it as long as you have one grain or one wine province. With that, all your grain and wine provinces, the production efficiency will increase, but in general, plus 10% for all of your other production stuff. So goods produced plus 10% is amazingly good. On top, what do we have here? Subversion bureaucrats, don't pick it, it's a, I don't, you don't need it. Zealous administrations. I have not even looked at it. I don't know. You don't need it. Something if you want to roleplay a little bit, you can take divine nobility. Then you get more army tradition, more leader upkeep. And but nevertheless, I would not take it. I just pick it from time to time for roleplaying. Mercantile tithe, global trade power, merchant trade power, and burgers equilibrium. This one is actually a good option. Mer global trade power is always very useful. So if you think about a theocracy who is much into trading, so this option plus a tier 2 option with the commercial mission gives you 15% global trade power. I think that's a valuable option. The tier 5 reform has one more special thing I just want to highlight. It's normally available, it's not available normally for Europe. It's if you are part of the Ainu or Japanese culture. Then you get infantry combat ability and discipline. I think this sounds pretty good. Tier 6 guys is for me one of the most boring ones because it does not give you many kind of options if you want to stay at Tier Crazy. If you want to stay at Tier Crazy, normally this kind of option becomes available 1550. So at 1550 there is no absolutism, so you don't need it. So the only option that is available is partial secularization. And this is totally boring. Tolerance for heretic and happens. You don't need it. As soon as the 16th, 16th century pops in, you can take strengthen the religious head because it gives you additional absolutism at maximum absolutism. This is pretty nice. The other two options, crown rulers and proclaim, proclaim republic, are only for people who want to exit a theocracy rate and become on the one hand a monarchy, on the other hand a republic. Though 
for certain countries, for example, let's take Cologne, for example, Mainz, Trier, all these kind of countries inside of the HRE, for these kind of countries, if they have grown a lot inside of the HRE, it's a very valuable option because they started as a kingdom, they started as something like an archbishop, and they maybe have grown so much and said, okay, I want to take off the HRE from the inside, but to become an emperor, I can't do it as a theocracy, but I can do it as a kingdom. Cologne, again, is a very, very good example. If you grow a Cologne until you become Westphalen, and then you change your country to, to a kingdom, to a monarchy, and then you basically can, be, can become elected. And you're already on a kingdom level, so it makes, makes things much easier. Papal state, again, papal state, they have received another nice buff that makes your land leader fire better. Though, I don't know what's going on with the Pope, but I think a military Pope sounds like a very, 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 very option. Tier 7. Tier 7, normally, in a normal game, where you do not colonization, there are only two good options. One option is, for me, empower the burgers, because trade efficiency is very important and give you more money. Additionally, global trade power, as I mentioned, now we are, if you're taking every time the global trade power, we would be now at plus 20 percent. This is very good. The second option I totally like, if I take economic ideas, is Lockean Proviso. Because on top to the 10 percent development cost reduction from, from the idea, you get your plus, minus 5 percent. Think about that if you take additionally something like divine ideas, you have another 5%. So, you remember in 1034 they reduced the development cost reduction from minus 20% in the economic ideas to minus 10. So, now think about it. I think they put it thumb just on different kind of places so you can have back the 20% with Lockean Proviso. So, I think this one is a very, very good option. Talking about the others, Right, if you would like, if you were playing a theocracy who goes and co goes into colonization, yeah, this one is pretty nice, but in a normal game you would not pick it. Embrace free trade, is trade power abroad, this is not as good as trade efficiency. The same goes for the mercantile approach, domestic trade power is not as good as trade efficiency. Alright, T8 again is very, very special. There are for me two good things inside. One is the combat heresy. Moral of army plus 10%, shock damage plus 5%. Keep in mind, this is a little bit similar what you get from the divine ideas. From the divine ideas, you get plus 10% moral of armies, and if you combine that with religious, you got the shock damage too. Though, with that kind of government reform, you would have plus 10% shock damage. Shock damage is very, very good in the early game. Very, very, it's not bad, but fire damage is better in the late game. So shock damage goes down over time. So at, in tier eight, it's already very, very late. And I think this combat heresy was in the past a tier two combat, uh, tier two government reform for theocracies. They moved it down from tier two to tier eight. I think. They tricked us here. They mixed in on top of that the shock damage, but they stole off here something. I, I don't I don't like it so much. But it's a very, very valuable option if you need moral. For me personally, the best thing is a technology cost, but not because of the technology cost. I just want to eliminate the randomness. With pursuit of knowledge, you can see the monarch skills of your rulers. You know, normally there are little bit, little pop-ups, right? You want a local, you want a foreigner, you want a theological, whatever. With that one, easily you can see what kind of skills are behind that. And I would always pick now pursuit of knowledge because it makes your life way easier. The other ones, expulsions of heaven, of heavens. Yes, okay, minus 5% development cost. Sounds good. Cult culture conversion cost. cost Sounds good too. It's an option, but I personally do not like it so much. For defense and clergy equilibrium, we don't need that. Tier 9 is actually a funny one. It's a little bit controversial. 
We have a lot of things inside, for example, the regional elected commanders, where you basically dis enable a parliament, so it becomes more like a democratic, uh, democratic theocracy. I would not pick that because the saving the, the diet and the saving the nobility estate is just a bad option. Other one, the public, open public elections, you can switch between militarist and theocratic, whatever you need. It rem reminds me a little bit on the on the Dutch version of the of, of their of their republic. Nevertheless, I would not pick it because it just does not feel right for a theocracy. This is just a personal opinion. I would not pick it. A good option could be dynastic theocracy. Landleader Fire plus one is pretty good. And on top of that, you can do royal marriages. The disadvantage is a general becomes the ruler. So this one basically rules out on top the pursuit of knowledge. So if you pick that one, you eliminate your options. And keep in mind, for that you need really good generals. You need to take something like offensive ideas so that your rulers stay good. Dynastic theocracy, you don't need that as a crusader order. For example, the Pope does not need it, the Boni order does not need it, Teutons do not need it. Because there the rulers already beca can become generals. And if they die, it's just good because rulers are normally really trash. Lords of the Sea, it's actually one-to-one -one the same like a dynastic theocracy, it just with, just, with, um, just with admirals. Again, I would not pick it at all. Last option is clerical, clerical commission. I would not pick that one either because plus one diplomatic relations slot. When you pick it, you don't need diplomatic relations anymore. You will have it very, very late, like 1620, 1630 maybe. But that's it. So at 1620, 1630, number one pick is always divine guidance. Tier 10, pretty boring what you can pick. There are only four options. My number one pick would be moral damage received minus 10%. And every time when my army beat an enemy, I get devotion. I think that sounds very good. Um, all the other kind of stuff like here we have free policies. I don't need that because you already swim in the end in, in, in money or mana points, whatever, you can just buy it. And missionaries, as a theocracy, you will have anyhow always um, too many missionaries, so it won't be a problem. And belief of, and of unity and faith, yes, this is actually something valuable. Two more promoted cultures, this actually can sound good. If you are somewhere in a region where there are a lot of different kind of cultures, and a lot of different kind of religions because it gives on top 50% unity. But I would always pick faith and power. But All right, tier four. Actually, I really do like tier four. There are four good options, but we can only pick one. If I would rank it, and you have to be always think about what kind of country do I play? Do I play a large empire? Like I do already right now an empire, Livonian order. I would always go for its governing capacity. So this would be my pick number one if I play a really wide empire. If I play a tall empire with a lot of tax and with a lot of temples, cathedrals just in grow, I would pick this one, national tax modifier plus 50%, so tax in, taxation of earners. This is actually lots of fun, so you have a lot smaller country and you tremendously grow it. A good option, for example, would be Strasbourg, Cologne and Köln again. Because you stay in one little certain region, you stay a theocracy and you just tax money out of it. Maybe that's even a very valuable pick for multiplayer. If you team up with somebody and say, hi, I, hi, I will only play a tall empire, I will take economic ideas, I will pay, take the wine, I will take Loki on provision, and I will take the other one with additionally 5% development cost, and I will just stay in my territory and get money like crazy from Texas. Cultural safe haven. I like it too. 10% manpower of the same culture group provinces and 10% of accepted culture provinces. You are asking why do I have not picked that one as Livonian order? Because I have so many cultures already here inside, so it would be me very, very hard to get all the kind of cultures inside. 
But if you now think about again, if you would flip the cultures to your distinct culture group, this one could be a very, very good option to get more manpower from the same culture group. The last one, cost of advisor with rulers cultures minus 20%. As I mentioned, if you play a big empire, money will not be a problem in the end. If that one would have come earlier, I would totally like it. Because minus 20% with rulers, again with innovation, maybe espionage on top makes advisors so cheap. But with T11, it's way too late, it's not worth anymore. If you are a tall empire, you go for money and taxes. And if you are a wide empire, you go for governing capacity. The global crusade is your number one pick. Because it's similar if you just pick it without adding anything else, you can declare war against any kind of neighbor. If you have, like I do, the, the, uh, the religious idea, you have the Deus Vult ability and you can target with that government reform any kind of, with the Deus Vult, any non-boring nations may be targeted by the Great Holy War. This is just great. And if you do not have it, but you picked as a tier 2 government reform the mission to civilize this one and mix it up with the global crusade, you can do, do the same again. You can declare war against any kind of pagan. So like all the Indians over there in, in America or the Tengu nations and so on. Another very good option is one state on a god. You're playing a white empire, you have absolutism up and maybe last, for example, like me, you have a protestant neighbor like my Austria. With that one, War score cost minus 30%. Plus absolutism, you can grab way, way more land than before. So this is very valuable too. Sadly, it comes so late. And sadly, you cannot mix it up with a 15th century age ability where you can take 20% from, from another country, uh, from another war, war declaration. Very sad that you cannot combine it because with tier 12, it's way too late. A third good option is priestly autonomy. Admin efficiency is very important. You know, there are certain kind of guys here who only pick, hey, I've picked this from Prussia, this 5%. I picked another 5% from Dish Martian. And then I formed Germany at another 5% on top of that. And then I had this monument down there in Granada and I have another 5%. So guys, with that one, you can another take another 2.5%. Please start collecting it. So, but nevertheless, this is pretty good, pretty nice. And on top of that, minimum autonomy in ter territories minus 5%. This one, state of ideologians, as I mentioned. <laughs> what do I want to do with advisors? In the end, at tier 12, I just kick out an advisor and, and wait until I have the correct one. Minus 20% advisor cost for tier 12. Come on, it's not important. This should be a tier 1 or a tier 2. For a tall empire, this one, Divinity through craftsmanship is a good option because again minus 2.5% development cost plus 10% goods produced make, Sum it up with all the other kind of development cost reduction you would have you would have even more than before the patch with quantity plus economy So I think there are a lot of valuable options. These are my top picks T2 manpower recovery speed external mission or commercial mission Tier 3, always go for the advisor cost. Tier 4, two options, expand temple rights or lands for the church. Tier 5, there's nothing with monastic, wrong with monastic breweries. If you don't have it, take the mercantile tithe. Tier 6, when you have it, take the partial secularization. After the 16th century, pick the strength and the religious head. Tier 7, empower the burghers. If you play a tall nation and you have economic ideas, pick Lokion Proviso. Tier 8. You want to see how good your rulers are? Pursuit of Knowledge is your first pick. Playing a tall and you like the more random idea, Expulsion of the Heavens minus 5% development cost is very nice. 
Tier 9. There is no good option. It's already very late. Takes a maximum of absolutism. Tier 10. Always go for army damage. This one is a nice pick. Faith and power. Tier 11. My first pick for white empire is plus, not, plus 250 government reform. If you are not playing a white empire, you can always go for the taxation of foreigners. If you, if you are playing a white empire and need more manpower, go for cultural safe haven. Tier 12. Always go for the global crusade. Deals with your neighbors, deals with your pagans. For a tall empire, pick Divinity 3 craftsmanship for more goods produced and development cost reduction. That's my summary for the Theocracy government ideas. I hope you do like it. Soon I will continue with the other um, government reforms like for the monarchies and for the republics. If you like it or if you want to have more details or want another guide, please leave a comment behind. It, it would mean a lot for me. Additionally, like it, subscribe it and share the news. Um, I'm a new guy here, but I really like, like, do, like to play the game and I really like to talk about the games. See you soon.